All right, man. So we got some huge news from a new poll for Kamala Harris coming out from a really, really important state. North Carolina is back in play now that Biden is out. And so North Carolina provides another potential pathway. It appears that Kamala needs to win one of Pennsylvania, North Carolina, or Georgia to have any real path to victory. So she does have to pick up one of these. She could pick up the Sun Belt plus North Carolina, or she could just pick up the Rust Belt or some Guambo combo of the two. But here we have a new poll coming out from East Carolina. They're a C-rated pollster, so they're barely of what I would accept. I'd say I only accept like C-rated pollsters are higher and the ones that are not like laughably biased or bad. Uh, but it says 1,000 likely voters, 823. So it's actually a slightly even old, like a couple weeks old. It says new general election poll in North Carolina, Trump 48, Harris 47. That's plus one. The last poll, though, was Trump plus five. So it's a four-point move-in for Harris, a four-point boost for Harris, which is absolutely massive. It's a huge margin. Also, another thing, the governor's race, Stein, at 47% plus six now against Robinson's 41. The previous poll, though, had Stein at plus one. So I uh, also have another video talking about how Kamala Harris is actually causing uh, the down-ballot race candidates for Democrats to surge. Although I was honestly pretty surprised with Stein's numbers in terms of only being plus six. A lot of the polls have him plus like 12, plus 11, plus 10. So it's actually pretty low numbers for him. But uh, maybe this could be more accurate potentially. I'm not sure. But numbers really, really massive for Stein typically. But I think what's, what's happening even there, you see a plus five versus plus four. What I think pretty obviously is happening is there's this surge going on, uh, even for the down ballot races for governors and senators and such, uh, because of Kamala Harris's surge, I think is what's also happening. So you can see that here. And she's dumping a lot of money now into it as well. But and Biden is now saying, you know, his big reason for dropping out is he said that the media was going to nonstop cover that, you know, he was the reason why, you know, they were losing uh, the down ballot races were doing poorly. So North Carolina, she's been surging in North Carolina for a while now. So uh, for, for Biden's numbers, we can check out what Biden's numbers were, what they said. So for Biden's numbers, when he was still running, uh, what was happening was he was getting his ass handed to him. He was down 6.9. A lot of that, I think, was probably Kennedy's support. At least 3% were of Kennedy's support were double haters, if not more, who were just voting for Kennedy. So uh, he was doing poorly uh, amongst black voters, young voters, etc. A lot of those double haters that ended up flipping for Kamala Harris. Uh, but so he's down 6.9. Kamala Harris now, we're in early September, she's uh, only down 0.4 now. She did actually take the lead for like at least like four or five days, it looks like. Four days, it looks like she took the lead. So it's really, really close. A lot of people don't seem to really be paying attention to the election right now or even like it's happening. I think we're in a weird situation where the 2016 energy isn't there. So it's not like Trump is boosting it that much. And then 2020 was COVID, so that boosted everything. So I think a lot of people just aren't paying attention. Uh, that's why I think the debate is actually end up going to be really big, really huge, because it's going to be the first time Kamala Harris really registered for a lot of people. And a lot of a lot of people are going to actually even get to know her at all. Probably there's probably a lot of people out there who don't even know she's really running or really paying attention. So even even in the poll, right, uh, you can see uh, I think this is head to head. So assuming there's not like I guess we can check here if it's been added. Um, but it's so, okay. So it's not had to hit here. So West is getting 1%. I guess another unfortunate thing is that, you know, you're going to have, the only good thing is, uh, RFK is not going to be able to get off of the North Carolina ballots. They've already printed thousands of absentee ballots. And so they would have to go through the trouble of basically reprinting all those ballots. So it's pretty much impossible for them to be able to do it. So they're voting against that. So you can see here, West is pulling 1%. This 1% could li literally decide the election here. Um, because you don't have to get 1%, but if the margin is within 0.2 or 0.3, which it definitely could be for sure, uh, if you could have just netted out 0 0.2, 0 0.3, that would have won you the election. You don't even have to win a majority of the 1%. Um, so this could be huge, but lucky for us, you know, RFK is still going to be on the ballot. So you would definitely eat some of Trump's numbers for sure. But you can see the sum of this is, is, uh, not as large as you would think, right? It's still only 96%. So 4% still left outstanding. So there's still like a good amount of undecided voters that she can pull from. And I think that that's going to be what ends up deciding the election. But, you know, you have these polls, a bunch of like plus ones, but you have bad polls here. Like SoCal is bad. That's a right wing pollster. Redfield and Wilton is a D rated pollster. So really bad. Insider Advantage, also a Republican pollster. But it's crazy because even the Republican pollster here, this SoCal poll is a joke as Trump plus four. Like there's no poll outside of. This morning console poll that has an absolute value of like two in a while, like since like like half like two weeks ago, basically his last focal data poll of three. 
So just it's just ridiculous that they randomly have like this plus four poll. But again, it's so cow strategies, right? The uh, Republican pollsters are trying to flood the polls right now. They're flooding the polls, right? Um, and so what we can see here is a clear surge. And the numbers are looking good. If you're at down 0.4 in the aggregate in September, it's really, really good where people aren't even paying attention yet. You surge really hard. It's in play. This is really, really big news for Kamala Harris. Now, Biden... Um, Biden in 2020 loses the state by about, uh, he loses by about 1.4 points in uh, 2016. You know, uh, Hillary Clinton, you know, she ends up losing by about uh, four points. So a huge, huge move in, a really, really big one. There's probably a, a much worse loss because Gary Johnson is eating Trump here, but Hillary's not getting eaten out by Joe Stein. So that's a big deal there. And then um, there's a lot of data and information on North Carolina where North Carolina has been having a big surge in population. So this is from their state office manage, state, uh, office of state budget and management. It says North Carolina's strong population growth continues. The U.S. Census Bureau's latest population estimates show North Carolina continues to grow by leaps and bounds. Once again, North Carolina added more people in the last year than any other state except Texas and Florida. According to U.S. Census Bureau's latest population estimates, an additional 140,000 people were added to the permanent resident population of North Carolina between July 1st of 2022 and 2023. Um... At 1.3%, the rate of growth in the state exceeded that experience during the previous two years. Uh, the rate of growth was fifth fastest among all states and D.C. So uh, net migration is really big there. So a lot more people are moving in than out. Uh, so that's a big deal for North Carolina. And uh, we can see, you know, it says North Carolina to become seventh most populated state in early 2030s. Seven population trends to watch in North Carolina over the next 10 years. So it's really, really heavily moving. I think a lot of the blue people from blue states like California and such are moving to other liberal areas. Like you move to the rally area, like those kinds of areas in North Carolina, or you move to the Austin area in Texas, or you move to those kinds of areas, right? Um, and then we can even look at like the uh, the growth as it's composed amongst counties. So um, here's some more data we have from uh, University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, Carolina de uh, Demography. Is it 75 NC counties have grown in population since 2022. So uh, what we have here is uh, it explains what's going on with these counties. So it's talking about how pretty much uh, most of the areas that are moving are blue. So you can see a lot of these areas that are blue, you know, Chatham by 2.1, Lee by 2.3, Harnett by 2.2, Wake by 1.7. I think uh, Johnston and the interesting thing to see actually that I think might determine the election so, for example, Franklin is actually a red, uh, a red county. For the Franklin County is actually red, so it's right here, right to the northeast of where Rally is located. It went fifty-six point one to forty-two point six for Biden. I think the question that's going to end up being interesting is there's a lot of net migration into the state, or into the Franklin County. The question is going to be: Are the people moving into Franklin County Republicans or are they Democrats? I think there's a good chance that they're Democrats. But I think if the people moving into Franklin County are Democrats as opposed to Republicans, that could be a game changer. Because if you start making, because uh, I don't think there were really any inroads really made in, in Franklin, because uh, it went from 54.6 to uh, 56.1. So it actually went in the opposite direction, right? So can you make those inroads in those areas? That would be really huge where you can start taking those numbers. Because these areas, these blue areas, Durham, Chatham, et cetera, Wake in these areas, and then, you know, areas like Lee County and Harnett that we see here that are having these change. Who are these people that are moving in? Are they Republican people? Probably not. They're probably Democrats. So if you can start to take the leads in those counties, it'd be huge. But these areas are growing massively and like 2.1% is huge, uh, you know, in an area like Chatham because there's just, there's a lot of people in these areas. So, you know, and in Durham and Orange and these kinds of areas. So uh, it'll be really interesting to see, but there's a lot of net migration into these areas. And so, uh, it says the counties with the largest population increases were in coastal areas and in the Charlotte and Triangle suburbs. The fastest growing county was Brunswick County, founded by Pender. And some of these, you know, areas where there's like this high popular area percentage growth, it's not really that impactful because if you grow by 4%, but there's like a thousand people in your uh, county, obviously it doesn't count. That doesn't actually translate to that many raw votes. So it's pretty interesting to see what's going on with these numbers. But the hope has to be. If you, I think what, what will decide the election is if the people moving into Johnston, Franklin, and Harnett, if they are blues instead of reds, that's a game changer and you probably win North Carolina. So I think ultimately it just come down to who it is that's actually moving into those areas. Obviously, these areas are probably going to be blue people, but the other ones here, are they going to end up being red, uh, blue people instead of red? 
So North Carolina legitimately could flip. It could be absolutely huge. And the the sort of historical trend, and I think 21% of the population as opposed to like 32% of the population compared to Georgia is black. So uh, it looks like Kamala Harris is probably going to do pretty well with black voters, young voters, etc. So that's likely going to be really, really helpful for her. And it can maybe even choose to uh, kind of flip the state for them. Uh, I want to see Harris get up 3 to 3.5. The polling error back in 2020 was about 3 to 3.5 points. So he's up by 1.8 but loses by 1.4. So they missed the mark. Uh, it'll be interesting. If she can get to 3 to 3.5 point lead, I'd say it's guaranteed to go blue. But I still think she could win if she's at 1 or 2, though. I do want her to get at least a lead of 1 to 2. Because the fundamentals and kind of like the 08 Obama effect as opposed to like the 2020 Biden effect, I think will play a big role. And then even in the aggregate here, there's kind of a lot outstanding. So she has a lot of room to grow, but North Carolina would be an absolutely massive state um, to pick. And you can just see here how massive this surge is. I mean, the surge is insane, right? It's a four point surge. And, and then you have, you know, even Stein is surging. So absolutely massive news. And if Kamala can maintain the surge, it'd be absolutely huge.